Last Thursday, the parliamentary inquiry met here at Holyrood in private and decided by a majority of five to four on party lines that Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament. Within minutes, that decision had been leaked in what looked like an attempt to generate headlines damaging to the First Minister. It was the latest chapter in an inquiry that's become tainted by a culture of unattributable leaks and bitter partisan infighting. James Hamilton's inquiry, running in parallel, is not tainted in this way. It was never going to be possible to bat his findings away as politically motivated. And that's part of what made this inquiry so much more dangerous for Nicola Sturgeon. Its job was to determine whether she had broken the ministerial code, normally a resigning matter. It found she had not. I am not aware, James Hamilton concluded, of anything in the conduct of the First Minister in respect of the introduction of or her observance of the procedure, which could be considered to be a breach of the code. The outcome is that Nicola Sturgeon will lead the SNP into Scotland's parliamentary elections on May the 6th. I have been at peace with my own conscience eh, on all of these matters. I have been very clear in my own mind that I acted appropriately and did not breach the ministerial code. But that, while that might be eh, necessary, is not sufficient. It's important to the Scottish people that they have independent verification and adjudication of that. And that, of course, is what they now have. But there is little doubt that an affair that began with allegations of sexual misconduct by a powerful man has had the effect of damaging a female head of government who had been enjoying unusually high levels of public trust and approval. There is a special anguish in this for long-term campaigners for independence. The bitter feud between the two outstanding figures in Scottish politics gathered momentum at a time when support for independence had been surging to new highs, sustained over many months. It's now fallen back. A few weeks ago, polls were showing that 55% were planning to vote for the SNP in the constituency vote in May. That would have given them an overall majority. That, too, has dipped back into the 40s. That's still landslide territory, with Labour and the Conservatives each in the low 20s. But crucially, it could deny the SNP the overall majority they seek. The pro-union parties would present that as evidence of falling support for a second independence referendum. It might strengthen Westminster's hand in withholding permission. But the Scottish Government has today announced its intention to bypass a Westminster block. It published a draft bill that would authorise a referendum without Westminster's approval. That is not Nicola Sturgeon's preferred option. She believes a referendum like that would lack legitimacy, especially overseas. What the SNP seem to be hoping for is that it would bounce the UK government into going to court to declare the referendum illegal. Not a comfortable thing for Boris Johnson, whose supporters so recently accused the courts of obstructing the will of the people over Brexit. The Conservatives say they'll press ahead with a vote of no confidence in Nicola Sturgeon tomorrow evening. With the support of the Greens, she should survive this easily. What we've seen over the last weeks and months uh, is... Uh, this whole issue being turned into a piece of third-rate political theatre. Uh, and now the Conservatives have realised they don't get to write the last act. The whole affair has exposed weaknesses in the governance of Scotland that will have to be addressed. But the pro-union parties must now make a judgement about how much further they want to press Nicola Sturgeon's personal culpability. How far can they go without appearing to pursue a personal vendetta rather than seeking genuine reform or definitive answers? And how closely should Labour stand with the Conservatives on this? They stood shoulder to shoulder throughout the 2014 referendum campaign. It saved the Union, but what a price they paid. Labour's 50-year domination of Scottish politics vanished as swathes of the traditional base switched to the independence cause and so far have never come back. Alan Little there. Joining us now, the leader of the Scottish Conservative, Douglas Ross, the SNP's Shadow Culture Secretary, John Nicholson, and Labour's leader in Scotland, Anna Sawar. And Alan um, certainly raised a lot of uh, longer-term questions there, but if we can just take you back to today. Douglas, I'm going to start with you. You said, you tweeted out, I think, you respect the judgment of um, Mr Hamilton, but you say the report doesn't change the overwhelming evidence that Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament. H how does that work? 
Because James Hamilton's report also says it's for MSPs to determine if Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament. And as your report outlined, there is a report due to be published tomorrow, which we understand will say that Nicola Sturgeon has misled Parliament. And that is a serious accusation. And if that is the case, Nicola Sturgeon said she would respect the outcome of both the Hamilton inquiry and the Scottish Parliament committee inquiry. And therefore, Nicola Sturgeon will have to accept that recommendation, if it is uh, the result of that she misled Parliament. You, you know very well that the Scottish Parliament will divide down party lines and that last week there was already a leak that came out before MSPs had even finished the vote. So no wonder uh, she is suspicious of it being an even-handed uh, report. Are you saying then you, you don't have confidence in James Hamilton? Do you, do you trust what he's done today? We'll just go back to the point about the committee. In terms of party lines, it is a committee with a pro-independence majority. And while the Conservatives, Labour and Liberal Democrats, we understand, it voted for that key at line that Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament, so did an independent MSP and someone who was well, elected as a Green with MSP. Respect, just go back to the question I asked you, which was whether you trust James Hamilton. Are you rejecting his findings or do you accept them? As I say, we respect the outcomes and the findings accept. of James Hamilton. Respect or accept? We respect the findings of James Hamilton, but I think James Hamilton would also accept that people can look at the same evidence and reach a different conclusion. That is the, the nature of looking at evidence and coming to a conclusion. But at the heart of this, what? we still know that women no. have been so badly let down by this whole episode. Well, you Taxpayers really... have spent half a million pounds of taxpayers' money on this field legal bid, and there has been uh, a, a lack of truthfulness from the First Minister and the Scottish Government. Well, that's why I'm asking you if you're choosing your own truth. Either you trust the independent inquiry led by James Hamilton, or else you don't, and you still bring a vote of no confidence. Are you still bringing that vote of no confidence? Yes, because that independent adviser to the Scottish Government said it's up to MSPs to determine if Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament. And that's what MSPs can determine tomorrow with the vote of no confidence that the Scottish Conservatives are bringing forward. Uh, John Nicholson, would you accept that this has left a stain on the SNP, that Nicola Sturgeon herself uh, admitted in the past to dreadful, catastrophic mistakes that let women down? Uh, well, she said that. She's been very open about saying that. She's apologised to the women concerned. There have been mistakes. But Douglas is really wriggling and uncomfortable because he put a lot of faith in uh, Mr Hamilton's report. He hoped, of course, that he would find Nicola Sturgeon guilty of the things of which she was accused. And what has happened today is that the independent adjudication uh, by Mr Hamilton, has cleared Nicola Sturgeon completely on every single allegation she's found not to have misled Parliament and not to have breached the ministerial code. It's a tough and difficult moment for the Tories and for them to continue with this motion of no confidence is deeply ungracious. Do you accept that whatever your party does next, there will always be a sense of internal battle lines drawn in voters' minds now? There is a sense of factionalism and division. No, I don't. Uh, one of the interesting things that we've seen over the last couple of weeks is the big surge in membership for the SNP. I think a lot of people, especially women, looked at the way that the parliamentary committee, which you mentioned, conducted itself and really found it rather distasteful, splitting along party lines, as you say. The fact that Nicola Sturgeon, as a woman, was asked to apologise for a man's bad behaviour by Murder Fraser, the Tory MSP, the same Murder Fraser who didn't ask Alex Salmond to apologise for his own bad behaviour. The committee has been completely discredited by the way it's behaved and its constant leaking, which has let women down. And the women concerned have said that they feel betrayed by it. Well, she, the, the women have been let down by the way that that investigation, that inquiry was initially conducted. So you can't just blame the other parties or the committee for the way they responded I'm not, to that. I, I'm not. I've said very clearly that the process let the women down. Nicola Sturgeon has apologised for that. But once the committee, it was a harassment, it is a harassment committee, began its work, the one thing that the women concerned should have been able to expect is when they gave private testimony to that committee that that would be kept confidential 
And what the committee did was leak that to the Sunday Times and the women concerned say this has led to further distress. That's how they've described their experience and they've said they felt bullied. Let me bring in Anna Sawa. Labour's position um, is a curious one here. W will you accept the results um, that James Hamilton has provided today or will you follow the Tories down a vote of no confidence? What will you do? Look, I accept the findings of the Hamilton inquiry. We've made clear uh, throughout the time I've been leader that we're not going to prejudge the, those inquiries. The First Minister deserved due process. That's why she had the opportunity to answer questions. She deserved to have the publication of the two inquiry reports. I think what's deeply unfortunate is, is two things. One, that Douglas Ross was calling for Rickler Sturgeon's resignation and a vote of no confidence before she'd even given evidence to the committee, it, which just slapped of uh, political game playing. And on the other hand, uh, we've got, you know, the SNP portraying this as some kind of recruiting agent as if it's some kind of campaign tool. The reality here is that we've had serious allegations made against the First Minister. You've had a harassment policy that has failed two women. We still don't know whether that harassment policy will pass the co court of test, and um, therefore giving confidence to women to come forward. We haven't had clear answers on why we had the wasting of public money. Right. And we've had the so, accountability as a parliament called into question. And let this, me just get this, this right then. It, in, in the vote of no confidence, uh, from what you're saying then, um, you will not be backing the Conservatives. You will be voting for Nicola Sturgeon when that comes tomorrow. Is that right? There's a couple of things. One is there's the Hamilton Inquiry report. There's a committee of reports. I'm just tomorrow. asking about the vote yeah, of no confidence. If that goes ahead, no where do the we, Labour we Party stand? Well, well, to be honest, the, the vote of no confidence is inconsequential. We already know the Greens eh, and the SNP will, will not support the vote of no confidence. Well, it's this not is, inconsequential if they call gonna, it. This is, this is going to be this is going to be more a political ding dong to do with the election called by by the Tories, which actually fails to recognise what are the real issues here. Right, so and will you ding or will you dong? What, what does Labour do? What, what's your vote so, doing? So we'll, I'm just so trying we'll, to understand we'll consider, that. We'll consider what the committee inquiry shows tomorrow, but what I think we're, what we have here is a government that's made some serious failures and mistakes and an opposition in the Tories that are letting down Scotland too. I think both. I think Scotland deserves a better government and a better opposition. What, why, Douglas, um, would you bother to hold the vote of no confidence if you do trust and respect what James Hamilton has written today? Because in James Hamilton's own writing, he's saying it's up to MSPs to determine if Nicola Sturgeon has misled them and misled Parliament. And therefore, if MSPs, as is reported, have found uh, in this committee inquiry that Nicola Sturgeon has misled the Parliament, then it's right Parliament has the opportunity to vote on a motion of no confidence in the First Minister. So the implication of that is whatever he'd said today was irrelevant to um, what the Conservatives would do next then, because you're going on as if none of that matters, right? No, because I'm, I'm reading the exact wording from the Hamilton report. The Hamilton report that states it's for MSPs to determine if Nicola Sturgeon has misled Parliament. And that's what the committee, which Nicola Sturgeon's government set up, made the remit, the membership and the SNP convenership of it, it agreed they would look into. And if that committee finds that Nicola Sturgeon has misled Parliament, Nicola Sturgeon herself has called for former ministers of the Scottish government to resign for far less than that when she was in opposition. Do, do you understand that, John Nicholson? Do you understand why no. that loophole has been left open um, for James Hamilton to say it is down to MSPs to decide? It's almost as if Doug, Douglas Ross hasn't read the report. He's talking as if uh, we're still to hear from uh, Mr Hamilton. We've heard from him. His exact words were, I'm of the opinion that the FM did not reach the provisions of the ministerial code. He has ruled. Douglas, it's time to let it go. And for Anna Sarwar to be saying he's waiting with bated breath to find out exactly what's going to happen when the committee report is published tomorrow. He must be the only person in the country who doesn't know what's in the committee report because his colleagues in the committee have been leaking like there's no tomorrow. Everybody knows what's uh, in the Anna's committee report and it's entirely partisan. Do you want to come back on that one? Look, it's, it's absolute nonsense. What, what you are doing directly there, John, and it's a deliberate tactic is to call into question any committee inquiry that has happened at neither Westminster or the Scottish Parliament by calling into question the reputations of individual members. I could flip the coin. I could flip the coin. I could flip the coin. I could flip the coin and say that the four SNP MSPs never went to the committee to look at it independently. I'm not saying that. Because it would be ludicrous to suggest it. Okay. What, what, what the, what the committee inquiry was looking at is a remit much wider than the Hamilton inquiry. The Hamilton inquiry was looking at breaches 
of the Ministry to right. the right. the We we're out of time, want time gentlemen. I want, I, want, I want to come back <laughs> on that. I sit we're on out of time. Committee. You get one last line, Anna Sarah. I sit on a select the committee now, so no member would dream of leaking. We can't hear you both. We can't hear you both. John Nicholson said he does this on the committee. Fin finish your point briefly, uh, Anas, if you can. I sit on a select, I sit on a select committee in the House of Commons. I, no member, Conservative, Labour, or SNP, would dream of leaking. John, can you let him finish? So the no point I was making, Emily, sorry, before Mr. Nicholson was was rudely interrupting, is that the committee inquiry was looking at things much greater in scope than the breaches of the ministerial code. They were looking at the harassment policy in the round and what okay. happened. In the case. These are serious issues and no one has yet taken responsibility for that. We're going and to end it there. Where's the action? Thank you very much. Thank you uh, to all three of you. Thank you.